tonight, a young woman is charged and remanded to Bordeley for the killing of Bob Hathaway. She was taken to court yesterday, that is the 4th of November 2019, and has since been remanded in custody. Police dispel speculation in active investigations and taught new wheels for St. Lucia's high flyer. We have the details of these stories and more coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelies and Amy Jacob. Good night. It is Tuesday, the 5th of November, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We're on Flow, Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM Radio. You can also watch via our website, www.caribbeanhottv.com, on our free Caribbean Hot FM mobile app, or on our Caribbean Hot TV Facebook page. I am lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. A 22-year-old female of Timon Union was arrested last Friday and charged on Saturday for the killing of Bob Hathaway. Hathaway, a British national who had worked and lived in St. Lucia for many years, was found dead inside his home in Piat Grand Riviere Grosley by a neighbor in January of this year. The young female has been identified as Elizabeth Janelle Volney. Police say civilians played a significant role in making a break in the case. She was taken to court yesterday, that is the 4th of November 2019, and has since been remanded in custody. Um, the Royal Senator Police Force obviously wishes to thank um, members of the public who were instrumental in these charges being preferred and encourage persons to continue providing us with information as it relates to any crime that may have occurred that you're aware of, who the suspect is, or any information that can lead to um, successful prosecution. Joseph was not able to provide further information on whether other charges would be preferred against individuals in relation to the case. Well, at this point, I am not in a position to confirm whether there were additional suspects or but what I can say is that she has been charged and the investigation is still continuing up until the point where conviction or dispensation of a matter, there are still investigations that are take place and that is the case in this matter. Hathaway worked within St. Lucia's tourism sector for many years and was the manager at the marina at Marigo Bay from 2006 to 2014. There has been an outpouring of concern for Victor Morris who was shot outside his house on Sunday. Police have indicated that the shooting of the well-known nut and dried fruit vendor is an active investigation. Residents claim that Morris was fired upon from a nearby vehicle. Police press relations officer Corporal Ann Joseph dispelled some reports that it was a drive-by. Well, the information reaching us is not that it was a drive-by. However, I cannot give details um, as to the specifics for now. Um, the investigation is in the preliminary stages, so we don't want to say anything right now as it relates to that matter. Morris is in stable condition at hospital. He is currently, well, the last that I was briefed on, he is in stable condition at the Victoria Hospital. He is in the intensive care unit. He has undergone surgery. Um, and that matter is being investigated by CID in fact. No arrests have been made in the matter. Now, the public relations officer of the RSLPF is also taking some time out to clear the air on a few misconceptions being reported on a number of fresh cases. And Joseph says, although investigations are ongoing, a lot of the information circulating is erroneous. As the officers of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force are continuing to ride high on a recent wave of success in bringing criminals to justice, they are taking the time out to dispel a number of rumors surrounding some of those successful busts. Public Relations Officer of the RSLPF, Corporal Ann Joseph, spoke to members of the media during a Tuesday morning press briefing and highlighted two particular cases, including the police shooting of Miguel Edward, alias Mad Max. The incident occurred on Saturday, November 2nd, 2019, when police tried to apprehend Edward in connection with various reports made against him, including attempted robbery, an assault with a firearm, and sexual offenses. Corporal Joseph went on to clear the air. These reports stemmed from the 1st of November 2019 and the 2nd of November 2019 prior to reports that have reached us there were no 
prior incidents where he was wanted for questioning or was identified as a formal suspect prior to those dates. Um, these were fresh matters that he was under investigation for. Corporal Joseph said all previous matters that Edward was to be questioned for had been dealt with. She said she could not disclose details into the accusations surrounding the sexual assault of a 105-year-old woman, but she had this to say. I won't give details as it relates to what um, he was under investigation for, but I can confirm there were reports of a sexual nature against him. Another matter cleared up by the corporal surrounded the details circulating in connection to a robbery. It has been reported that there was a sexual assault reported um, at Bele. That is actually not the case. The report that was made to the Marigo police station is a report of an attempted robbery. Nothing was taken from the victim. It did involve um, someone accosting a young lady in her motor vehicle in that area about 6 p.m. on the 2nd of November 2019, but um, it was not of a sexual nature. She did sustain a laceration to one of her hands as well as to her upper lip. But there was no report of a sexual nature made to the police. The matter is under police investigation, and so far no one has been apprehended in connection to this crime. Reporting for Heart 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. One local law enforcement officer is urging the public to take extra precaution to protect themselves and their belongings. In recent months, homeowners have taken to social media with footage of thieves and home invaders caught in the act on camera. The officer applauds the use of surveillance cameras and alarms, but encourages people to also take traditional methods such as neighborhood watches into consideration. Jacques Wooding reports. While local law enforcement have promised that they will be out in full force to ensure that everyone has a safe Christmas season, members of the public are urged to be increasingly cautious about their personal safety and that of the security of their property. Sergeant of the Gros Lake Criminal Investigations Department, Siobhan Matthew, says that he has taken notice to the increased use of domestic surveillance systems and applauds members of the public for spearheading such safety initiatives in their homes and communities. And right now we've moved into a stage where um, there's a lot of high-tech where persons could install cameras um, and they could view the, the, the cameras on their phones whilst at work. You know, they could monitor their homes. There, there are even cameras for, for farms. I know there's, there's an alarm system um, being sold for farms. Um, there's this gentleman from Precision Surveillance. Um, I think his number is 724 He sells cameras for your home, you know, home alarms, also for your farm, especially for the farmers because, you know, around the Christmas season, you know, that's when the produce, uh, a lot of produce is being sold. A lot of persons normally go on to the, those persons' farms to steal items. So, you know, for the farmers, I'm encouraging you to install some kind of um, alarm on your farm. It's available. It's readily available right now in St. Lucia. The homeowners, I'm encouraging you to install cameras. He says that even traditional methods of surveillance have proven very effective in this critical time. The establishment of community watches has been very successful in many communities. However, Matthew says that simple acts such as discreet disposal of appliance packaging and double-checking household locks could determine whether your home is targeted by thieves. There are a lot of things that we could do as homeowners and also as persons roaming the streets every day to keep ourselves safe. Um, one of which is persons who normally buy new televisions around the, the, the Christmas season. A lot of persons take a practice in f disposing of the box that the television came in um, near the road for and w when the garbage truck passes by. And this is something that could lead the feel that, hey, this person just purchased a new television. Probably we should, we should break and enter in, um, in, into this house. Um, also, I believe that persons need to start a lot of what you call neighborhood watch groups, um, especially around this time of year because a lot of um, persons lose their, their, their personal items um, around the Christmas season. Matthew underscores that the costs associated with installing security measures to one's home will never be greater than the cost which can result from a single robbery. You know, you could put in your burglar bars, you know, your, also put the burglar bars on your, on, on your doors. You know, it's better to lose... It's better to spend $1,500 to get those, those alarms in done to lose almost $10,000 worth of valuables at your home. So I'm encouraging everybody to make their investment, you know, especially in this upcoming Christmas season. People are urged to protect themselves but are cautioned against participating in any form of vigilante justice. For Hot 7 News, I am Jacques Wooding.
Thank you very much, Jaka. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. When we come back, the Breaking Habits November Challenge is on. Is the Ministry of Education doing enough to address the current health and safety issues at schools that have led to disruptions? And meet St. Lucia's new Youth and Sports Ambassador and her new wheels, courtesy the Government and Northwest. That and more when we return.